Well, we definitely should have seen something like this happen because when is it not in Lasengel's interest to drop another random banner with a bunch of limited units on it? Now, if you did not catch this for whatever reason, you've been living under a rock or not actually playing this event, they just dropped a surprise Space Ishtar and MHX banner on us over here on the NA version of the game, and we're going to go over whether or not it's worth summoning for these units, which NA players are in a pretty unique position that if you do want either one of these servants, you know, you're kind of in a good spot to just go ahead and summon for them because the rest of the year is kind of like pick whoever you want type of deal. Like there's no uh, really broken servants that are particularly coming back aside from, you know, Melusine or at the like end of November-ish, beginning of December-ish, around that time, and then you have uh, both the Koyan Skies coming out for New Year's, and really you want to go for like the Buster Support one, because that allows you to Buster Loop and everything, but really like even the Koyan Light, I believe is, oh no, it's Koyan Dark is the, the bad one, the foreigner one that we're going to be getting, but even her, she's really solid, it's just that like, I don't know, like she's not like particularly broken or anything. She's just another really good servant. Same thing for like Scotty coming back or Ty Gong coming out or Izumo. They're just a bunch of good servants that you can, you know, take it or leave it type thing. So if you do want to summon on this banner, this video is going to be for you. Now, first and foremost, I want to talk about some of the servants that people are probably not going to be mentioning, namely MHX over here. Now, I'm probably going to be summoning for MHX over on my Twitch over on Friday. You know, come out to that uh, at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll probably start streaming about like 30, 40 minutes into the uh, stream. Or did I say we're going to start streaming to 30, 40 minutes, summoning 30, 40 minutes into the stream? Look, I just got off of one of my streams today. So I don't know, maybe I'm a little just too tired. But this is a good server. You know, aside from me being a huge saber face simp, she is actually really good. Now, one of the funny bits about MHX is that it only took us literally buffing all of her skills and her NP, right? We literally had to buff everything, but she's actually really solid. Um, as an assassin, there's kind of a joke going around, I suppose, in the community that like Kama is so good as an assassin that she kind of bullies everybody else out of the assassin class. But I don't think that's necessarily true for people like, say, um, MHX over here. She does have her own little niche going for her, right? For instance, she does have the saber face, um, you know, power mod over here, which is nice, alongside the Saber one over here, which is not bad. Now, originally when she came up, people were like, why does this assassin have a power mod against Saber? She should have been an archer, but it's like, well, no, like you can bring her against riders, and then it just opens up her versatility. If you're going to bring her against Sabers, she can also just have a power mod and effectively do still really good damage against them, right? So it's just still kind of nice. And with all the Saber faces we are getting, this is kind of more like a bonus, because the Saber faces are kind of in like all the different classes like if we pull this up you can you can bring it to quite a few different fights over here i mean these are like all free eats and neutral these guys are just getting absolutely obliterated i'm so sorry mordred you're gonna be getting slam dunked on and then but you know i guess you know mordred's getting dunked on but so is morgan and jolty you know the number two the best two fate wifeys in fgo and i will not hear any other opinions but yeah, you can bring it to quite a few fights. Like, this is aging kind of nice because the longer FGO goes on, the more Saber faces we're going to get. I mean, look at this. We we just got Draco, who's like another Saber face introduced into the game. You know, we have Ace the Saber, who is a caster, so I don't know if you particularly want to bring her to that fight. But then following that, boom, another Saber face right there. So, like, look at this. In this year alone, we got, like, what, three new five-star Saber faces? Crazy. Ridiculous. So, this is going to age very, very well. You're going to be able to bring her to a lot of different fights because, I mean, if they're going to do the 1.5 million HP Salter fight over here, I wouldn't be surprised if they do one for, like, normal Artoria or they want to rerun Salter again as, like, a really hard boss or something like that because, you know, iconic villain for Heaven's Feel and whatnot. If they want to do that then, you know, she's just going to look even better as well. But her other skills are nothing to laugh at either. I mean, I do wish she maybe had, like, a battery or something. That would be kind of nice. But as a, you know, very old servant, they did not really respect the quick card very much. They gave her very high NP gain and very high hits. I mean, also look at this. 12 hit single target NP. This guy, this guy, well, this lady is going to be spanking out so many stars, so much NP it'll make your head spin, right? Like, she's really, really good. If you do want to go ahead and summon for her, I think she's very solid. She pretty much has everything she needs to be an effective DPS. She has two very good power mods. It's just, I don't know. I can understand if you already have Kama not really wanting to go for the server, but me, I'm going to hopefully be able to get her on, like, Friday and then ideally get her all maxed out and everything and have a video out on her, like, Saturday or something, hopefully. If not, if there's no uh, MHX video on like Saturday or Sunday, I did not end up getting her. <laughs> I got clapped up. 
Uh, but then the other limited unit, the one that's causing a huge stir is Space Ishtar. Now, the reason might, you know, I guess the reason being, you know, if you're a new player and you might be wondering why there's like this huge buzz around this servant, because, you know, you, you go into the game of FGO and you've heard a couple of things like, you know, some servants are really good. Like you probably already know that like Castoria, Koli and Sky are really good. You know, you probably hear like through the grapevine about like Okuko Khan's coming out in like a year and a half or so and she's gonna be really good but then space ishtar is another one of those ones that you hear a lot about one of the things that makes space ishtar so good is her second skill um she can change her np type to quick arts or buster she is naturally an art servant so if you're gonna be using her for arts uh farming you could save this till wave three for extra damage if you really need to close out the fight but it's also the fact that she can change her np type and she has a very very generic kit this is a servant that is always going to be good in fact we were talking about this on stream today and that space is is one of those units that you'll notice they haven't given her a buff anywhere, right? Like she's pretty much standing the test of time. It's just a very good unit because no matter how the meta evolves, she just does really good damage and all of her buffs are just very generic. Like she gives herself attack. It doesn't matter, you know, if the meta is quick arts or buster attack NP damage and giving yourself all different card type plus the extra attack. And for whatever reason, I mean, I know I'm the extra attack meme guy, but if for whatever reason the extra attack becomes some type of weird meta, she's even prepared for that. She stacks NP damage, so she also gets better as the fight goes on. She has a 50% battery. She probably just has the most like basic best kit you could give a looping servant to adapt to any meta and that's why not only is she just always really good and she's always going to hold a very high place in like tier list and people's um considerations for what the best units are going to be but then there's also the fact that she hasn't been buffed at all like all they really have to do if they want to buff this servant which i'm going to pull up the uh, damage chart over there well, one thing that they have to do is maybe just guarantee this, right? Like if you, I don't know, buff her second, first skill, whatever you want to do, and just tack on like buff success rate, buff of plus 20%, so she can guarantee this on her third skill, she's going to be nuts because she does have a little bit of a discrepancy between like her normal damage and when she actually gets the card buff over here. Now, do keep in mind that this is not going to be her damage even without this uh, because she is stacking that NP damage. It is higher than this. This is just like wave one damage with the second skill and everything active and then this is if you get the card buff but keep in mind it should be uh, higher than that because she is stacking np damage every single turn and if you're gonna be using her as a buster farmer then oberon really likes that you're getting like 60 percent from that and then you can loop this back on your third skill to have like basically a black grail right that's 80 percent np damage plus the 20 from oberon plus he's gonna be buffing that so it's like black grail on top of black grail it's ridiculous she does so much damage she's so good but you can see why a lot of people are like should i summon for this servant considering the other guys that are going to be coming out this year and honestly even if you have someone like say a summer comma right you have someone like her and you're like oh i'm using summer comma as my arts farmer it's not a bad idea to pick up space ishtar like i know that eventually you know space ishtar is not going to be my go-to uh, arts or buster farmer right in fact uh, for buster you know most of the time i try to use morgan because i really like her a lot but if i'm going to go for like the best unit i'm probably going to uh, sway away from using like morgan and space ishtar for serious nodes and I'm probably going to use someone like Kukul Khan because, again, man, I, I, I don't. This is one thing I don't like about this damage chart is that it's so disingenuous for Kukul Khan, right? I've said this every time, and I'm going to bring this up so she doesn't get disrespected. This is not her damage. This is her real damage because this is free. This is like not even something that should be considered because uh, Koya and Skaya, who even if you don't have your own, maybe you have Oberon, you could do like. I don't know, some weird buster setup like that. But if you could bring a friend, Kolya and Skaya, or you have any starting bomb star CE that drops at least 20 stars, this is already free. You get this for three turns. It costs 10% uh, for Jade Charisma and 10% for the Golden Rain Force to get this. So like, y she's ridiculous. She does so much damage. And then she has two more power mods, right? Like if I'm going to use somebody, I'm probably going to use like Kukul Khan. But if for whatever reason, if Buster starts falling out of the you know favor for the meta for whatever they want to do for you know, FGO, however they want to start uh, building those. I don't know how they can make Buster fall out. It's just really good at ignoring like the different numbers of enemies that you have. It doesn't really care if there's one to six guys. They don't really care at all, but I don't know. Maybe enemies get like Buster resistance or something. So you specifically have to use quick. Well, the good thing is 
you can use Space Ishtar as like a quick servant. Like if you do want to use her in the quick meta, if you want to use her as an art servant, you can use her as an art servant, right? Like she's just really good in all these different metas. Like she's just built very well to stand the test of time. And if this unit ever gets power crept, like if we ever get a basic unit that is just like, you know, good at doing everything, like they kind of have just the most generic kit that's good for every single meta. And that's just like her, but better. It's going to be ridiculous because it's going to be like, what, like a 60, 70, 80 percent battery. These are going to be like 30, 35 percent buffs. You know, she's going to stack, <laughs> I guess, all the card buffs and NP damage. Right. It's ridiculous. But I imagine before that would happen, instead of power creeping space Ishtar is like the de facto go to like perfect all rounder unit. They would just give her like some buffs or something. Right. Because then she could just start looking a bit nicer. But She's really the prize to go for. I, I did want to kind of give, uh, I did want to give MHX a little bit of limelight over here because some people kind of, you know, sweep her under the rug, but she's not bad. She's definitely like a strong servant and you'll get a good, uh, get good value out of her. But then there is Cersei over here who I do like Cersei, but there's not a whole lot to say about her. Like she can be really good for your 90 plus content because she is functionally just a buster version of Medea, right? Like she just does a bit better damage, higher stats, actual proper real scaling, uh, same battery and then just, you know, buffs and stuff over here that are just kind of nice i mean this is good because you can just have her chunk one like big enemy in like a 90 plus 90 plus plus content mm -hmm. but you're probably going to need her to be like what like np2 three four for that stuff but again she's also not limited so maybe you already have a couple copies maybe you snag some extra cerces as you're summoning for this but let me know your thoughts in the comments down below if you're going to be summoning on this banner i may or may not be going for mhx i'm really torn between her and uh archer john i might check some of the um GSSRs for this upcoming New Year's and then uh, next anniversary to see if maybe MHX or Summer John are on a GSSR that I want to do and then I might plan out accordingly because those are really the two servants that I'm looking at right now. But let me know all that in the comments down below and I will catch you guys on the flippity floppity.